will now be recorded. So today is the Thursday, September 10th, 2020 meeting of the Hall Planning Board. Uh, I think uh, let's cut the call to order is um, <clears throat> pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Hollis Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. But every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for a new order. A reminder of persons who would like to listen or view this meeting while in progress may do so by logging or calling in or calling as specified above to the uh, 254 number with the access code as listed. So we have as the second item of business public hearings, A, continuation of item PB 2020-02. First, I guess we should do a roll call of all the members present. Yes, please. So Duncan Berry is me, and I will say that I'm present. How about Craig Chadwick? Craig Chadwick here. David Harris. David Harris, present. Joe McFarland. No, I think you got to unmute. I can see it, but you're muted. And I hear Joe yourself muted there. Hit start the phone. Well, I don't know how to put him in. I know that he's here. He's we heard him before. Yeah. Barry Mazowski. Here. And we're giving myself to the first public hearing, please. Yes, understood. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse here. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz here. And uh, Alan Peterson is not going to be joining us this evening. Right. So let me, uh, let's get into the first item then. BB 2020 02 Brian and Bobby Osev, applicant as applicant tenant, care of Andrew Singer, Esquire, Amos E. Ball, et cetera, as owners, seeks approval of a site plan review special permit and a use special permit with waivers pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 325 13. Uh, paragraph 4, line 30 to 55 and 51, to construct a miniature golf course and expand and improve the parking and vehicle access. Property is located at 346 through 28 and 0 system road, maps 21, parcels N1 and N2 respectively in the C-H-1 and R-M zoning districts. This has been continued from the 25th of August, 2020. So I guess we should be hearing from the applicant first. Yes. yes th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrew Singer. I'm an attorney in Dennis Court here on behalf of the applicant. The two applicants, Steve Gapoyan and Swabi Osef, are on the call with us, as are the project engineer, Dan Frodo, and the project landscape architect, Shannon Goheen. We are going to have two presentations for you this evening, myself to start, and then Ms. Goheen uh, to discuss the landscaping. And then we are all available uh, to answer any questions that we may not address during our presentations that you may have. Uh, this project, as you noted, is to redevelop a portion of the property. Uh, it is where you see it as Bud's go-karts in the antique store uh, at the intersection of Sisson Road and Route 28. This is a zoned parcel of land. The front part is in the commercial CH1 zone. The back is in the residential RM zone. Uh, as you know from going by the site for so many years, the part of the land that the applicants are seeking to redevelop is now uh, used for 
storage, outside storage of materials, boats, vehicles, trailers. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there, and this project will be redeveloping all of that. We have submitted numerous materials to you, including aerial overlays, plans, uh, the project benefit list, as well as a summary of reasoning from my office. You have three letters of support, two from local businesses and one from the Chamber of Commerce. We have been working very closely with the planning and engineering departments on this, and that is why we have been continued to opening tonight, because we were working through a relief from the Board of Appeals and discuss, as well as uh, meeting the requirements and the questions of both engineering and the planning department. I would like to clarify one thing from the legal ad with the plans that are before you. No waivers are needed at this point. There was a waiver originally that is removed, so the proposal before you tonight has no waivers. We are seeking uh, a site plan special permit uh, for the site plan itself, and then a use special permit for the recreation use. You are authorized to grant both of those special permits. Uh, for the use special permit, you're authorized to grant it when the use will not adversely affect the neighborhood and you find that the site is appropriate for the use. There will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. An adequate and appropriate facilities are provided for proper operation of the site. You look at site plan review special permits when they meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw. I'm going to discuss, and then Shannon will as well, and Dan can with questions, how we believe all of these requirements are satisfied by this redevelopment. A portion of the property to be redeveloped has been cleared for many, many decades and used for this outside storage, as well as the dirt parking undefined without drainage up at the front of the property. Uh, this proposal is a seasonal use that will eliminate the year-round use of the property. There will be a 64% decrease in the square footage of the residentially zoned rear part of the land that's going to be used for commercial space. And more than two-thirds of the overall proposed reuse will be located within the commercial district. There will be one 18-hole miniature golf course. Front, side, and rear yard setbacks, as well as site coverage and building coverage, will all remain conforming. We went before the Harwich Board of Appeals, and they granted us a use variance to reuse a portion of the residentially zoned part of the land, and that is what's shown on your plans. And you will see as when you look on the plans, everything that is outside of the golf course fencing area is to be re vegetated um and that the septic will be back there um and then there's more trees which we'll discuss and shannon will get into these were conditions and discussions by the and working with the board of appeals to improve buffers to uh, the rear of the property when you look at the property and you can, if you look at the aerial you will see this clearly there was already a very significant and dense vegetated natural buffer going all the way to the back that is not going to be disturbed Absolutely at all. Uh, you have a plan now in front of you. Find in the top right is all the natural vegetation that will remain as is. And in the clear denuded area that's next to that, which Mr. Heen, you will see people discussing the landscaping. Important as far as site plan review and, and the access questions, right now there are two curb cuts. There's a large curb cut on Sister Road, and there's a curb cut on Harold Street. The curb cut on Harold Street will be closed. Uh, that area will be revegetated, as you'll see in the plans and you can see on the aerial. And a new curb cut will be uh, cut in on Sisson Road uh, to provide the dual access for the property. Parking will be shared with the other uses on the site. That is something that is always desirable, where people coming to Bud's go-karts can go to the golf course, and people going to the golf course can go to Bud's go-karts. As for the access, you will see comments that the police department had requested improvements to the curb cut, the main curb cut down across from the Shaw's entrance. And in fact, those changes have been made. Uh, the fire department, of course, the plan, the DPS 
W is looking at removing the island that is uh, near the front of the prop, near the front access, which is not, which is beyond our control. But when you take that in conjunction with the improved curb cut to channelize and control traffic coming onto and off the property that the applicants are proposing, there will be a significant improvement in access to and from the property. The hours of operation for the business are times to match Bud's go cards seasonally. The last tickets for players to use the golf course in the season will be 10 o'clock at night. The play of those people is approximately an hour or a little more than that afterwards. Uh, in the off season, the business following Buzz will be closing uh, earlier at 7 o'clock. These are conditions that are also in the Board of Appeals decision and we're proposing them with you as well. Uh, as I noted, and we will get back into it more with Ms. Goheen, uh, there will be significant new landscaping, white pines and others planted uh, on the site. The screen in the back, there's also extensive vegetation within the golf course, as you can see on the plan that's before you, as well as out front along Sisson Road. The property is partially located in a floodplain, and this was a significant reason why we went to the Board of Appeals. The proposal that you have, by putting one-third of the golf course, or a little more than that, in the residential zone, which has now been approved, the Conservation Commission was desirous of that because it keeps more of the constructed use of the property outside the floodplain, which is right along Sisson Road. And it's a benefit to prevent storm damage. Uh, we have received an order of condition for an earlier site layout, which is slightly modified in the plan you have now. So we will be going back to conservation for a minor amendment for the slight changes. It, it meets everything that the Conservation Commission looked at originally, which was parking in the same location, the golf course is in the same location, so that uh, the protection of the environment is, is, is kept. <laughs> Submit that the proposal will provide the best buffer to residential uses further up Harold Street and the best redevelopment for the neighborhood. As I mentioned, you have letters of support. The proposal will be in keeping with and compatible with the neighborhood. The intensity of this proposed seasonal reuse will be much less than what is otherwise allowed under the zoning bylaw in the commercial zone. These uses include restaurants, retail stores, repair facilities, and marine uses. In this case, we're going to have seasonal patrons to the redeveloped site that can reuse or use along with buds who will be able to spend longer at the property. The site will be closed, the site will be quiet, and the site will be dark most of the year as a seasonal use. In season, in some of the shoulder seasons, it will be used naturally only when it's good weather. This is an outside use. The weather is bad, people don't do golfing, and so it is a limited season which will be able to be used when there is good weather. Lighting will comply with the Harwich regulations. There will be no negative change in artificial light, noise, litter, or odor. Proposed lighting will be shielded and dark sky compliant. There will be no negative impact to the neighbors. The lighthouse feature of one of the buildings on the golf course, in the, in the top of it, will have a dim light for ambiance, but it will not be more than a residential scale light, and we're proposing to put shielding on the back of that lighthouse so that even that limited lighting will not have any potential glare to the neighbors up the hill and over the trees. We submit that the proposed structural features of the golf course, the lower elevation of this golf course than the neighbors to the rear, because the hill rises up over, and the natural and proposed screening will prevent additional noise impacts to the neighborhood. Naturally, there is some noise with the go-karts, and any commercial use has people using it, but they're here, there's heavy screening to the residential abutters. Finally, we submit that this proposed reuse will not be creating any nuisance, hazard, or congestion to anybody in the neighborhood and that it fits within this neighborhood with all of the permits that have already been granted and with the permits we're requesting from you this evening. With that, I would ask Ms. Goheen if she could go over the landscape plan and then again, we are happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. May I ask that uh, whoever, somebody's got some feedback going on, some ambient sound. Could, uh, if you're not speaking, for the respect of everybody else, please mute. Thank you. And uh, I want to talk you through this. Our first priority here was to screen. We wanted to screen the neighbors on all sides. And uh, our second priority is beautification of the neighborhood of the site. And our third priority is making an ecologically responsible pollinator friendly. And we've done all those things with this design, which is now in its third iteration. So, um, first of all, screening, you know, that's always been very important. As Andy said, uh, there is significant, uh, a lot of trees on the site, that entire hill. And um, we intend to leave everything that, um, leave everything there. So the only area that we're going to work with is down below at the bottom of the hill, the entire hill that is wooded now will stay intact. And we are going to, we were asked to provide 25 white pines. We are going to plant 30 white pines. And that screen will stretch across the entire back of the property. So it will be at the base of the wooded slope and will completely screen everything that is being proposed tonight. And we will be starting with tall trees. Also, pines go about, we go to about 80 feet. So they're, they're going to keep going up and providing nice screen more so every single year. Um, along uh, Hillard Street, we have a hedge of summer sweet. That's a native shrub that gets to be about eight feet. And a lot of parking lot trees, red, red maples, and white oaks, swamp oaks. All of that, by the way, it's all uh, native plants because um, it's within the flood zone and near the flood zone. And so we've kept it all native. And um, the bare ground that is there now will be covered uh, largely with conservation grass seed. If you're not familiar with that, that is a seed mix that we've been using for some time now on the Cape that was developed from native grasses on the Cape. So it's, it's really um, works very well in this area and is made for this area. We call that conservation grass. Um, as far as beautification goes, the very fact that we are adding a lot of beautiful large trees is going to improve this site greatly. Um, we're adding many, as I said, the summer suite that is uh, acting as a hedge on Herald Street, that blooms, it has a lovely scent. The rain garden, which is new this time around, um, you've seen on your plan, that is full of perennial flowers that are able to be inundated, which is why they are good rain garden plants. And in addition to that, they are terrific. Um, they are terrific for pollinators. A lot of blooms for pollinators, a lot of food for pollinators. The, the mini golf area itself, the rim of fencing of the mini golf area, uh, we're getting more ornamental in there. There's going to be a lot of color, a lot of texture, a lot of interest, interest for people, interest for pollinators. It's going to be very flowing, very pleasant, scented. It's going to be quite nice in there. Um, and also, to touch on the pollinator part, um, as I said, the plants are native, and native plants are already heavily involved with a lot of the insects and the critters here in this area. So they are already doing good things for the environment. Um, and then we've added, as I've said, we've added all those things in the rain garden. All of my choices, really all of my choices are 
have the golf course uh, pollinator friendly um, bird friendly pedestrian trees. And so we feel that we have improved markedly on the site as it is, and we have improved markedly uh, according to what has been asked of the residents from the beginning and uh, some of the boards that we've gone to before. I think that finishes what I want to say unless someone can continue. Mr. Chairman, um, thank you. We are happy to answer any specific questions or general questions that you might have. Again, we have the project engineer, Mr. Wilson, one of the applicants, is also a landscaper. Uh, so we will be happy to try to address all of your questions. Thank you. Well, I think at this time I'd like to hear from the town planner, please. And to unmute, sorry about that. Um, uh, thank you everybody for your presentations. I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Um, as uh, Attorney Singer indicated, initially there was going to be a waiver for parking. However, uh, that is no longer needed. Um, the health department has no concerns with the change in use. The health department will require a pass. Title V inspection, as well as a disposal system construction permit to connect the proposed restrooms to the existing septic system. Both of these items need to be completed prior to uh, building permit approval. Uh, the fire department indicates that it looks great. The fire department endorses the plan and has no issues. The building department has no concerns. The only police department comment from the beginning of this was improvements at the entrance of Sisson Road, which to, which appear to have been shown adequately on the plans. The Conservation Commission approved an application for proposed golf course on January 10, 2020, as some of the property is in the flood zone, which is conservation jurisdiction. When reviewing the planning board filing, it was noted that the plans do not fully match what was approved by the commission. The assistant conservation agent does not foresee the commission having any issues with the revision. The request for a change in the approved plan needs to be done in order for all departments and involved parties to be operating off the same set of plans. Engineering, um, those are going to be covered under, under the planning staff comments and also that the site will require a stormwater discharge permit. The water department. The plans don't identify a proposed water service to the new ticket window restroom building. That said, the antique store and go-kart both have water, town water, so they may be installing a water service from one of the other buildings, which would not involve the Harwich Water Department. And DPW, the DPW has no concerns with the plan. Please be advised that public safety has requested and DPW is pursuing the removal of the raised island in front of Star Market where the tanker rollover occurred last year. The DPW director is in the process of setting up a site visit with Steve Pepper, just an editorial note, he's with the Cape Cod Commission. Um, given the island was originally constructed as part of the district of um, regional impact that approved the Star Market Plaza. Um, it is also an insurance matter uh, which further comments. As far as my own comments, town staff met with the applicant for an initial review prior to application with the town. Uh, the town engineer and the town planner have met um, on at least three occasions to review the various iterations of the plan. To date, the questions and concerns that were raised um, by us have been addressed. Stormwater will be fully addressed by the town engineer through stormwater discharge permit process. The miniature golf course and related parking does cross a lot line. The parcels would need to be combined prior to the commencement of any work on the property. In the alternative, uh, an easement uh, may be in order or some, or, uh, some other type of a uh, cross easement or, or um, you know, document satisfactory would have to be done. The rear portion of the property is located in the RM Zoning District. A use variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals was granted. And as Attorney Singer indicated, there were a number of conditions proposed that would also carry through if the Planning Board were to approve this, uh, both the special permit for the use as well as the special permit for the site plan. 
Uh, we are recommending several conditions um, for primarily the site plan special permit and include but are not limited to all drainage and stormwater requirements, local, state, and federal shall be met and approved by the Harwich Town Engineer prior to the commencement of construction operations, including stormwater discharge permit. Prior to commencement of any work on the subject site, the two parcels shall either be combined by an approval not required plan or an easement agreement or some other legal agreement shall be executed. Neither document shall be valid nor work shall commence before said document is reported at the Barnson County Registry of Deeds and a copy of that document is filed with the town of Harwich town clerk as well as the planning board. All zoning board of appeals, conservation commission, and board of health requirements shall be adhered to. Lighting shall comply with the requirements of the code of the town of Harwich. Any changes to the site plan other than those resulting from mass DOT review and approval shall be subject to planning board review and approval. And that would go along with any drainage uh, changes as well, I should indicate. Um, that the decision, as always, needs to be recorded to registry of deeds prior to the issuance of the building permit, and that conformance with all review procedures, requirements outlined pursuant to section four, uh, excuse me, 400-18G inspection, certificate of completion, and an as-built plan of the Code of Harwich shall be met. And as of September 1, 2020, uh, three letters of concern were received and copies were attached to the board's um, uh, packets. Um, and as Mr. Singer indicated, uh, there were also four, uh, three letters supporting this application. And at this time, that concludes my part of the staff report. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Do any members of the board have questions for the planner? Hearing none, what I'm going to say is that uh, these are lengthy letters. Oh, Dave, let's go ahead, sorry. You need to unmute. Still need to unmute whatever your phone or your computer. Oh, go ahead, Dave, I think I unmuted you. Ah, okay. Okay. I had, I had unmuted myself and uh, didn't work. Uh, my question for, for you, Charlene, is does the Harwich Board of Appeals decision relate to both use or was its primary uh, issue the floodplain? The, the permit that was through the Zoning Board of Appeals had nothing to do with the floodplain. It was only the use within the residential zoning district. Conservation, conservation reviewed and approved, although it, the uh, landscape plan does need to go back to conservation, but conservation did approve uh, that portion within the floodplain. Thank you. Any other members to the board? Uh, I, I, I just want to. I just want to add this to it. When we went to conservation, uh, the uh, conservation commission about five six months ago, we were proposing at that point the construction of two eighteen poles miniature golf. Would you please identify yourself? Uh, this is Fabio Josef. I'm uh, one of the partners developing uh, uh, the miniature golf project. So. Um, yeah, this basically wanted to say that the project is reduced from what we had proposed uh, six months ago on the Federal Conservation Commission. So, I want to say that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Bill Stoll. Yeah, Bill got uh, muted somehow. He's now unmuted. Uh, yeah, I have a question on the landscape uh, plan. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, I'd like to know what size the new red maples are going to be and what size the new cedar trees are going to be. The red maples, just a minute, let me check. I prepared 15 gallon trees, probably 8 to 10 foot. I'm going to 
So the maple tree is about 10 feet tall? Yes. Okay. And the cedar trees are? The cedar trees would be about the same. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, it's Craig. I have a question. That's Craig. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, the uh, stormwater discharge permit um, you, mentioned, you mentioned, Charlene, I think you said would be required prior to issuance of construction permit. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, that is a permit that is through um, the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen has appointed the town engineer to be the permit granting authority and public hearing granting authority. So um, Griffin Ryder, our town engineer, will be holding, once an application is made to him, will be holding the necessary public hearing and abutters would be notified on that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, specifically, the reason that I am is um, there, I've noticed in driving by there that water tends to pool um, on Herald Street right at the bottom of Herald Street where it meets Assistant Ave, uh, just off where the existing uh, driveway is. Uh, that you're going to be closing off. And I wanted to ensure that that uh, stormwater runoff from the new construction doesn't, uh, hopefully would improve that condition, but it certainly doesn't do any worse. And I guess from what I'm understanding, is that something that would be addressed by Griffin at the time the discharge permit is applied for? Uh, all I can say is that all stormwater must be taken care of on the site. So if the uh, existing curb cut is contributing to a drainage issue happening on Herald Street, um, you know, if they're closing that off, if it has to do with Herald Street itself and Sisson Road, then that would be a matter for the town to make that correction and not for this project. And that would be something that would be determined by Griffin and the property owners. Well, they, the, the property owners have to demonstrate that no runoff will go outside of the confines of the property. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I do have a couple other questions, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to uh, come back to them or. No, please go ahead. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that you decided to, uh, counselor and then, uh, applicants, glad that you decided to close off that um, current entrance and exit, uh, exit to Herald Street. I think, um, I think that's definitely a positive. I do have a question about the uh, entrance and exit as proposed in the um, I'm going to call it the current location, which is opposite the entrance and exit to um, uh, Shaw's or Star Market. And I think, uh, Councillor Singer, that you mentioned the police had requested a change to that uh, entrance and exit. Was, did I understand that correctly? Yes, yes, sir. If you look at the plan that is up now, right now there is no channelization at that curb cut. It's just a wide open free for all. What you can see here is that there'll be an island to create an in and an out lane and additional landscaping right to the north of that, that green area, um, to uh, to provide additional um, channelization of the traffic. So this is what the police department was talking about. This is all new to improve over existing conditions. Excellent. Glad to see that. Um, and I assume as a result, the entrance and exit width um, will be reduced from what it is now, as you mentioned, it's kind of a free for all right now. So it would be reduced to um, whatever the rules and regulations are for width of entrance and exit, correct? If I could ask Mr. Croto to address that um, specifically. Well, uh, Dan Croto from Moran Engineering. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, the idea would be to we go, Mr. Croto, just oh, as a request, if you're not speaking, please mute the microphone and unmute it when you're ready because i think we have like a dozen open mics right now and it's just there's a lot of static so please 
mute either your phone or your computer screen. Thank you. Got it. I just turned it on uh, just minutes ago. Um, so, the idea would be everybody, not just you. Thanks. Um, the idea would be to add the island to uh, channel the bring the exit of that lower area into conformity. The other, the other, the uh, south side, which would be, the, which is the entrance. We will be adding arrows too. Um, I don't think we have that for proposed plan. We're able to bring up in front of us. I don't know if that's something Charlene has. She could bring up. I think Swabi was looking for the proposed plan, but to show the um, the traffic flow arrows. Uh, so the idea would be to obviously differentiate between the exit and the inlet. Uh, we weren't going to shrink it down beyond that. There is another island down towards the building because that those existing parking spaces uh, for access to those. But I think once we once we channel the exit area going out to the uh, going going to the north, channel that, and then we also. Um, I guess like Andrew had brought up as part of zoning board of appeals, the requirement was to remove the access onto Herald Street. So um, so to maintain access for people coming from say Brewster or, or coming from the north from Sisson Road to further alleviate the traffic, we were going to add that um, add that curb cut to the north at the enter exit is shown on that plan. Um, definitely taking away that traffic. Um, so it would be it would be improved. It would be improved. We weren't we weren't completely um, we weren't completely shrinking down the entrance on on that south side. That's a long winded answer to your question. Okay, so um, basically, what I'm hearing then is um, the island is providing for the the channelization of the exit but the entrance is essentially no different than it is today wide open uh as a three senior set of free for all but well, everybody be at least everybody be heading in one direction on that side whereas now it's a, you know a complete free for all I, I would think the issue would be if you have people going in, in multiple directions through there so I think it will uh, vastly improve the way it's laid out now. Okay, uh, that's a that's actually a perfect segue to my next question. Thank you, Mr. Cotto. Was there any consideration given to making the existing entrance where we've just been talking about where the new island will appear, making that entrance only, and then the new curb cut that is being proposed um, out onto Sisson Street, making that exit only, so that your uh, flow is uh, one way through the entire parking lot off of assistant in back office system. We did put some thought into that. I, I, I mean, we'd rather this this method and that it doesn't channel all the um, go kart use down through the um, past the, the next use, the, the golf use. Um, it would allow the two different uses and uh, I think less, less travel back and forth on uh, an area where, where it will be um tending uh many kids and hopefully um hopefully ada clients also uh going through this so we we like the two different openings uh as is seen with um you know like the Cumberland farms in town the luke's workers in town where they have two different sides both both openings it seems to help the, the traffic flow go well I'm not saying we're going to have the flow of a convenience store um, with with uh, the golf course. I saw these research was that uh, it takes about 50 minutes to play the uh, course. So you're talking, it ends up being about um, one car every two minutes, and then with the with the golf with the existing go carts having 15 carts and um, for about four turnovers an hour. That ended up about the same one one car for two minutes, so it should be well under some other uh, 
more intensive businesses in town or traffic intensive businesses in town or we're just hoping to um, alleviate all all issues with traffic so our, our feeling was having the two different openings full service um reduced reduce the flow okay. if, if i could this is andrew hi andrew you know the the that southerly main entrance which is there now it is at the part of the road that was improved when star market was improved and that curb cut which with the channelization that dan's proposing now actually you can see it on the plan better lines up with that intersection across the street and from a traffic point of view that's that's a positive as well to keep people in an area where um, they're expecting it Agreed. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple other questions, but I don't want, I don't want to. Please go right up. This is the time. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the other question is I believe, Shannon, you mentioned that there's a fence or a proposed fence around the um, entire 18 holes. Did I understand that correctly? I didn't actually say anything about that. Um, the, the answer to that, Mr. Chadwick, is yes, there is a fence. If you look on the plan in front of you, the, the heavy black line is yes. the fence around the golf course. The only break in that is at the ticket entrance building, as you can see out near the front, where people come in and out. Okay. Um, and, and that fence, is it a, proposed to be a chain link fence or a stockade fence? Uh, I should ask Mr. Osef to address that. Yeah, Swag Osef here. Um, well, what we're thinking that it would be the most appealing from the street, uh, just to have a aluminum fence on the front facing Cecil Road, and then channeling going um, on the north side and the back, uh, the west side of the of the site. Four foot channeling. Four four foot, you said. Yes, okay. four feet, yeah. Okay. And if I might, Mr. Chairman, on page uh, sheet four of the plan submitted, there is a um, detail of the proposed fence. Yes, great, thank you. Oh, good, I missed that. Thank you, Charlene. Um, uh, last question, I hope. Um, it seems like there's a lot of water hazards in these 18 holes. I don't think I'd want to play it. I'd lose a lot of golf balls. But um, specifically, the water um, in the uh, mini golf area, um, I assume that's not going to be standing water. I assume there's some kind of pump uh, that's going to be uh, pumping the water through. Uh, is that correct? So I'll be also here. Um, yes, that is correct. We're going to have a uh, pump uh, that will be moving the water. Uh, the water would go to waterfall and uh, multiple uh, fountains on site, which it would provide uh, natural filtration of the water. We're not planning to use any chemicals. Um, the depth of the ponds are designed to be 16 to 18 inches deep. So even if you lose your ball, I think you should be comfortable to actually walk in. And as long as you have flip flops, you should be able to uh, to access your ball. Okay, okay great. And uh, those of that pump and the fountains and so on and so forth would be shut down or shut off uh, at night when the uh, the facility closes, I assume, and it's not a pump that's going to run all night to circulate the water. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time and the answers to all my questions. If I might, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chadwick reminded me of something I neglected to say. This is Andrew. Um, in addition to the pumps being off, once the golf course is closed and the employees have cleaned and have left, the lights in the golf course will be shut off each night as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Are there other members of the board who would uh, like to speak? Or questions? Mr. Chairman, Bill Stone again. Yes, Bill. Um, I have a question on lighting. Now, when you say that the lighting is going to be shut off, will it be shut off by a timer or is it going to be left on until 10 or 11 o'clock? 
Um, you know, the, the lights, um, if, if you hear me, uh, the, the lights, um, the golf course lights and the other lights, uh, with the exception of security lighting on the ticket building, would be shut down. We anticipate they'd be shut down by 1130 because, you know, if whoever comes on at 10 o'clock, once they finish their rounds of golf and the employees can clean up, we would think that would be the latest on a good night in the summer would be the latest you would ever have them on at other times of the year when the golf course is closed at an earlier hour uh, the lights will be off. Uh, now i should ask i don't know if uh, to Swabia, Steve, i don't know if they'd be on a timer or if they would be manually shut off I think we would have both options, but I'll prefer to manage that manually. I mean, me and Steve would be on site every night, so um, we would prefer to manage that, make sure that employees exit, everybody's safe, and at that point, we shut the lights. But um, okay, I don't think it's a big deal to have this uh, uh, set up also by remotely done. So uh, with today's technology, I don't think that's an issue at all. Okay. Uh, my last question was, is the lighting a downforce lighting? Yes, it is. It is all dark sky compliant shielded lighting to prevent light glow and pollution. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on the board? Let me think. I got yeah, a question. Mr. Chairman. Can, uh, this is Dave Harris. Can you hear me? Yes, Dave, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fingers, uh, uh, explain, explain, uh, explaining letter indicates that the hours of operation are until 10 p.m. at night. Did I just hear someone say that people will be admitted until 10 o'clock and they will not necessarily finish their round of golf until after 11? Then the lights will, re will remain on until those people finish their round of golf. So the, the actual hours of operation are really past 10 o'clock by an hour or so. Is that correct? This, this is Andrew. Uh, in the season, um, on a good night, a you know, good weather night, yes, you, you are correct with what you just said. Yes, sir. And this is the first we've heard that it, hours of operation really don't stop at 10 o'clock. They continue until after 11. Is that right? Uh, the, the ticket, the last tickets would be sold at 10 o'clock. If someone's done by 1045, they'd be gone. If someone's done by 11, that's when they would be gone. In Mr. Osef's research for an 18 hole course, it is typically 50 minutes uh, per customer. My grandson can stretch, stretch 45 minute golf into an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Osef will, will go out on, when your grandson's there, he'll go out on the course and push him along. <laughs> I think Arthur has a question. If you're yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you. Um, are there any foods being offered on the premises? I'm sorry, was that a question about food? Yes. Yes. Uh, the, 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 on the golf course itself, um, and uh, turn to Mr. I believe all there's, there might be some like chips or something, but there's no food service at the golf course portion. I can't, I don't know what's actually at Bud's, but, but at the golf course itself, there won't be um, a food service aspect. Okay, thank you. Joe, Mary? I have nothing further. Mary, are you unmuted? I think she recused. That's right. Pardon me. That's right. Okay. Well, uh, I think at this point we should open it to the public. Um, so, is there anybody in the public that would like to uh, address some questions? Please announce yourself and uh, your name and uh, your address. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, this is attorney David Reed. Yes, sir. I represent Beach Plum Condominiums, which is the abutter to the northeast. They're actually fronting on, on uh, Harold Street, but they are the abutter at the northeast corner of this property. Yes, sir. Uh, we have 
uh, opposed this project from the beginning, principally because of the concern for the commercial use of the residential portion of the site. Uh, that's somewhat academic at this point since the Board of Appeals has granted the variance for that use. Uh, and as one of the members asked, and Mr. Singer, I think, responded, or perhaps it was Charlene, uh, the use variance was granted by the Board of Appeals for the recreational use for the residential portion of the lot. Uh, however, we have some remaining concerns and questions that I'd like to address. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, the applicant and Mr. Singer and uh, Charlene and your town staff for making this much better project today than it was when it was first proposed. Uh, my clients are much more comfortable, not happy, but comfortable with what has been proposed now uh, with a few remaining concerns that I would like to clarify with you. I had a question about the uh, landscape plan that you showed earlier. Uh, the scanned version that's in the packet online is, is so light it's almost unreadable, so I, I do want to clarify a couple of details. Uh, one of your members asked about the height before of the maple and cedar trees, but we didn't ask about the height of the proposed white pines, which are the easterly most buffered toward my client's property. Can I ask uh, Ms. Goheen what the planting height and what the mature height is of the proposed white pines? We were planning to, yes, we were planning to start with 10 to 12 foot high pine trees to begin with. And pine trees grow 40 to 80 feet tall, and they grow quite quickly. Good. Uh, thank you. The, I, I also note that the part of your approval tonight is a site plan approval, and the landscaping details have not yet been incorporated onto the site plan itself. Uh, is it your, your intention to file a final version of the site plan that incorporates all of them together? or simply to reference the landscape plan on the site plan, uh, something like that I think would be uh, certainly appropriate since it's not shown on the actual site plan. If, if this is Andrew, if I could address that to Attorney Reed, we were proposing to reference it by incorporation so that all the plans would be part of the board's decision. E excellent, thank you, Andrew. Uh, with respect to the, uh, the planners, uh, report to you and the seven proposed conditions. Uh, I apply to the eight proposed conditions. Uh, I'd like to address a couple of them and ask perhaps for some clarification of them. Um, condition number three references compliance with the Board of Appeals requirements. I think under the circumstances of this case, it would be appropriate to expressly reference the conditions and the variance in their case number 2020-18. Uh, the referencing only their quote requirements it seems to me rather vague uh, since at the beginning you, you all acknowledged uh, that the variance conditions are there. It seems to me appropriate to specifically reference them, not just generic requirements. With respect to the lighting, which is condition number five, uh, I would ask that you include the information that Mr. Singer provided a few minutes ago, specifically indicating that the light in the lighthouse feature will be shielded so as not to shine in the direction of the residential property uh, to the east, and also that all the lights on the course, with the exception of security lighting, will be off when the, clo when the course is closed. Uh, that raises a question for me that, that uh, Mr. Harris just brought up about the actual hours of operation. The Board of Appeals decision, condition number four, says that the operation of the miniature golf course business is to run only between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m., not 11 p.m., not 10.45, but 10 p.m. To me, that condition means Lights out and, commission, and uh, customers gone by 10 p.m. Not just closing the ticket office at 10 and having people meandering around and playing golf and, and having fun and having all the lights on to perhaps 11 or beyond. Uh, the conditions of the variance limit the operation to 10 p.m. And it would be my suggestion, my request, that that be honored and we not fudge that number 
by saying that it's only the ticket office that closes at 10. I think the entire operation needs to close at 10 p.m. as was previously represented in the application and as was conditioned by the Board of Appeals. Uh, condition number six in the, in the plan as proposed conditions refers to any changes in the site plan would need your approval other than those that might arise as a result of the Department of Transportation review. Uh, I frankly think that any conditions or changes that, that Mass DOT proposes ought to be reviewed by you as well because they might be very significant. Several of you have already asked questions about the changes in the entrances and exits on Sisson Road and the elimination of the uh, access from Harold Street. If Department of Transportation has some other scheme in mind, uh, I think that ought to come back to you and, and have your approval and have some opportunity for input from you and perhaps from the neighborhood, uh, because I think that's a significant part of the redevelopment of this site. Uh, and I don't, I don't really see in this case that it's appropriate that you exclude that from future reviews by you. Uh, the access is an integral part of the site plan that you're being asked to approve. And if that changes, I think you should be asked again to approve or disapprove of such changes. Um, lastly, the, the petitioner's narrative to you recites uh, in, in Mr. Singer's advocacy that the residential portion of the property is currently being used and historically has been used for a pre-existing non-conforming commercial use. That is not the finding that was made by the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals did not treat this as a change of use from one pre-existing non-conforming use to another. They, in fact, at the petitioner's application, uh, treated it as a new variance use. And I, I, I hope that you would not adopt that uh, professional advocacy of Mr. Singer as a finding by the board, because I think there is no evidence before you, as there was none before the Board of Appeals, that what has gone out there uh, uh, historically on the residential property is anything other than a rogue and, and unlawful use of the property. It's not a pre-existing non-conforming use, which implies its status as lawfully protected, which it is not. So please do not out of shorthand or out of uh, convenience, make reference to that prior use as somehow having been lawfully pre-existing, because I respectfully suggest that it is not. It, 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 the new use would be there by variance and not by grandfather status. Uh, again, I, I want to thank the applicant and Mr. Singer for working with staff and for hearing the neighbor's concerns and for modifying the original plan to something that is much more, much more palatable, highly welcomed by the residential neighborhood. Uh, it is uh, much better and much less offensive than it was before, and I hope will work compatibly with the neighborhood in the future. Uh, but the, the conditions that I've discussed tonight, most importantly, the question about the hours of operation, I think has to be clarified and has to be strictly held to what was applied for, what was requested, and what was approved by the Board of Appeals. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Reed. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who would like to address the, the uh, board? I, I would like to say one thing. It, can I say something as one of the applicants? And I would like to respond after Mr. Gapoyan as well, sir. Okay. Um, as far as the hours of operation, we know that this is a seasonal business. We're doing our best to um, accommodate everybody. It's just like when you go to a restaurant. Let's say the restaurant closes at 10 o'clock. There are on occasion people that won't leave. Bud's go-karts, they've got go-karts going around the track at 11.15, 11.30 at night during peak season. We're not going to do that. The max, the max that will be open, last ticket during peak season, let's say someone walks in at 10 o'clock. Yes, we're going to take the, the uh, opportunity. And they'll be gone 15 minutes later. So that's what I have to say about that. And the go-kart tracks are still going when we're going to be closed. All right, so I guess that's that. 
But if I might be able, if I might be able to follow up on that, because that in what Mr. Gapoyan just said, I want to echo in response to Attorney Reed, the condition in the ZBA decision uh, number four says that we are going to follow Bud's go karts. We said namely in season, and we provided some hours. And as Mr. Gapoyan just said, Bud's. It's when they stop taking people, we stop take selling tickets, and then the businesses slowly, you know, wind down as either the people go around the go karts or they play their round of golf. But we believe that what we have expressed to you is the same intent as what the Board of Appeals approved, because we're following buds, and that's that's we're not seeking to do anything other than what um, buds is doing. And the only other comment I wanted to make is that uh, while Attorney Reed and I respectfully disagree on how you classify the prior use of the property, I 100% agree with him that what we asked the Board of Appeals for and what they granted was a use variance, you know, for the use that um, of part of that residential and for the uh, golf course use. So I do agree with him on what the ZBA said, and we believe that the the, the use uh, limitation, you could repeat the same information that's in the ZBA decision as if you want on, on hours of operation, and that will match what FUDS does. As far as also referencing the lights and the other um, clarifications that Attorney Reed asked for in the conditions, the applicant has no concern or no issues with that. Uh, respectfully, Mr. Chairman, the, the representation to the Board of Appeals and the decision of the Board of Appeals does not say it stops taking new customers at 10. It says the hours of operation end at 10 p.m., period. Oh, thank and you, Rob. I, I do not accept the, the notion that somehow that means we just stop taking new customers. Ms. Greenhouse, I believe you'd like to weigh in here, and then I'll know uh, Dave Harris after Charlene. Uh, yeah, just, just a couple of things. Um, so the hours of operation have been um, imposed by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that, regardless of anything this board says this evening, that's what they would have to adhere to. Um, I don't have a copy of their decision at my fingertips, but any conditions imposed by the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, would have to be adhered to and that would take precedent. Any changes in their conditions, they'd have to go back and amend those. Um, but so any conditions imposed by the Zoning Board of Appeals, those are the conditions that, that this board would also have to adhere to. You can't be counter to what they've imposed. Just like if there's a change, um, you know, the plans have to be consistent with what conservation has approved. Um, and also the issue of whether it's pre-existing non-conforming use or use variance really has no this board, your board, the planning board does not get involved in um, pre existing non conforming matters. That strictly is zoning board of appeals. They did get a variance. Uh, that's really a moot point for, this, for your board um, in this matter. And I think that's all I had. The, um, just clarify the zoning board of appeals hearing was 2020 dash. Is there the right number? Uh, I'm sorry, Shailene, was that a question to me? Uh, either you or, or David um, Reed. The, the ZBA yeah, yeah, case, the, yes, the ZBA case is 20, I'm looking at it now. It is 2020-18. Um, I have a copy, both David and I have copies in front of us. Right, right. That, that's all I know. Yes. Mr. Harris, did you have, have a comment? Yeah, I, I was just going to ask Charlene if we could make the hours of operation uh, a condition uh, in approval, or is that a moot point because the Board of Appeals has already set that? It, through you, Mr. Chairman, in my opinion, because the Zoning Board of Appeals has already addressed it, you need to comply with what the Zoning Board of Appeals did. I don't think you need to double state it. I think the fact that, um, you know, proposed condition number three, and I would say that, you know, all Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, specifically case 2020-18, conservation and Board of Health conditions and requirements shall be adhered to. Uh, thank you. I think that's a good idea. 
So what is the uh, wish of the board at this point? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might, this is a large project. This is the first time um, that you are actually receiving testimony on this. Certainly, if the board feels comfortable this evening, moving forward, that's that's fine. If the board, um, you know, would like me to to revamp some of the conditions, particularly regarding the lighting, so you get the wording you like or what have you, you know, I don't think it would be out of question or, or out of order if the board felt that they wanted to, you know, take this under consideration and continue it. Whichever the board wants, I, I have no problem with. But you know, you don't have to feel that you need to make a decision this evening. Uh, but if you are ready, then that's fine too. Uh, this is Joe McCowan. Yes, Joe. I make a motion that we continue the matter. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. Wait, wait, you need, I'm sorry, to a date and time certain, I'm going to suggest October 6th. Fine, amend my motion to say continue to October 6th. How late is I'll second the order is in 6 to 8, 30 p.m. Point of order, if I might ask, this is Andrew. May I ask why you are continuing? Because I think that there needs to be some work done uh, by our staff uh, to get a final decision put together. I don't think I don't think there's anything that we disagree with, and I certainly didn't. I didn't have anything to say tonight, but I, I certainly didn't. Uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand, I, I'd be more comfortable if if we had the planning director write up a, a uh, an ultimate, uh, basically our decision. As I understand it, just a clarification and a, and a better definition of the, the conditions. Well, of course, correct. the language on the lighting, I think, was one issue. Lighting and then the ZBA, yes. So we'll, then, we will then, then to clarify the pre-existing uh, authority of the ZBA on all these matters. No, we don't need to include that at all. That's got nothing to do with you guys. Well, we have a motion and a second. Um, so uh, I think I will we'll do a roll call vote. Um, I'm sorry, who did the second? I'm sorry, was that David? David Harris to the second. Uh, yeah, I second. Joe, Joe's motion and Harris is second. Thank you. So let's do uh, the vote is Duncan Berry, I, Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, I. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McCollum? Aye. Uh, Arthur Rouse? Arthur Rouse, aye. Bill Stoltz? Bill Stoltz, aye. Okay. And this yeah. will be first on that agenda. So Thank you. This to October 6th. Thank, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. So now we are moving on to item number two at this time, which is PB 2020-23, Richmond Harbor Real Estate LLC applicant and owner, care of Tony Andrew Singer, how convenient. Representative seeks to amend a site plan review special permit and special permit for a structure greater than 3,500 square feet, granted in case PD 2019-27, or in the alternative, a new special permit to make alterations to the previously approved design at the north and south ends for replacement restaurant building, as well as reducing the size of the gatehouse building and accompanying landscape revisions. The application is pursuant to the town of Code of the Town of Norwich, sections 325-55, site plan review, section 325-51, structure greater than 7,500 square feet, and chapter 400. The property is located in the RH-3 and R-L zoning districts at 23 Snow Inn Road, map 8, parcel P-12. So, I think 
we have now time to hear from the applicant. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and I just wanted to confirm before I begin, I believe uh, Ms. Maslowski is sitting on this case, so you do have the seven members, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. How are you here? She's muted, but I see her live there. Okay. There she is. Um, Great, right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, good evening again. Uh, for the record, my name is Andrew Singer, attorney in Dennis Port here on behalf of Wichmere Harbor Real Estate. With me this evening are Michael Charlotte and Bill Ganchert from the Wichmere Harbor Club, Tom Mulcahy from Hawk Design, David McNevich from Coastal Engineering, and George Kakitis, the project architect. We submitted uh, a, month, a bunch of a number of plans to you as for this amendment request. Uh, there is a color plan called an illustrative plan that if I can direct you to it when I discuss the changes uh, that they're shown clearly there because this was a significant project that you approved earlier this year. These changes are not in and of themselves uh, super expansive but they are uh, being done to improve the operational flow of what is proposed. So I want to take you through those. And if you are looking at that illustrative plan, which just, if you have it in front of you, is, is the plan, it's a one sheet that says, looks like this, it says illustrated plan down in red on the bottom. I would like to, oh, there, and there it is on the screen. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take you through that. And then if you have questions, um, any and all of us would be happy to answer them. Uh, we have been working extensively with the town planner and the town engineer in reviewing these changes. Uh, I'd like to stress to the board that there will be no change in the approved use or scope of the activity. What you proposed last time is staying the same. These are changes to make improved operational flow and improved environmental benefits. But the approved use is not changing. So everything you granted before remains the same. Uh, so starting from the lower left of the plan, where you see a purple and green, the original proposal was to, and what you approved was, was to re replicate the existing shape of the building, which is not a shape of the building that you would build today if you want to have a restaurant use. So what we're proposing to do is to shave off in purple there on the west side and the south side of the building. So that, which is going to get further away from the Antarctic Sound, further away from the to the west. So that part of the building is going to be removed and it's going to be replaced with the green to fill in the jog on the south end of the building. All of these changes that I'm about to discuss with you have been approved unanimously by both the Conservation Commission as an environmental benefit and the Board of Appeals as Improve as part of the special permit with the board. Moving to the north end of the restaurant building where you can see the green, the oct that's the octagon end of the building. And we have all the plans and elevations we're happy to show you. This plan is very helpful to walk us through it. That octagon end of the building is expanding. Um, and that part of the building only is going to get another four and a half feet taller. It is still going to be conforming to the bylaw. It will be under 50 feet. That, so that part of the up on neck of the building is larger. 90% of the building, everything from there, all of the hatched area down to the end of the building is remaining the same. What you approve for the height and the overall size of the building does not change. Um, there will be window changes and commensurate window changes and others in the building, but there's only going to be 129 square feet in that building. So the building's not getting significantly bigger. It's just being reportioned a little bit near the north end to provide better flow, as I mentioned. If you look just north of that to the traffic circle, that circle, the, the inside island of that circle. Is you guys, Andrew, you keep going in and out some, for some reason on your volume. Okay. I'm not sure why. When you back away from your screen, we lose you. Oh, okay. So you want me to, I should stay closer? I think I so. Think that would be better. better. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I apologize. Um, I was just discussing the third change, which is the uh, trap, the drop-off area. The inside island is being reduced in size, so that even though the the circle doesn't get bigger on the outside, there will be more traffic. Uh, there'll be more area for fire safety to circle around that area, and the entrance has been straightened out uh, coming into it. So that's that's another change. It, it looks relatively minor, but that, I wanted to point that out to you. In addition, on the east side of the restaurant, evening, uh, ramps and stairs leading into the pool area are being uh, shifted slightly to accommodate um, a more uh, ADA and flow through use of the ticket building, which is the little building to the, to, at, the north, at the top edge of this plan, you can see a little purple. You approved a larger building, the purple footprint. We are proposing now to actually reuse the existing building, which is smaller, and it's shown as you see it on that plan. And then the final change is within the pool areas itself. There are going to be some shifting of just where the um, landscape features are in there. Um, and on the southern pool and the southern spa, you had approved an infinity edge on those pools. But that is no longer or is not allowed by state law. So the infinity edges have been removed. Uh, and so that's another change. Again, it's very difficult to see on this plan because it's so small in relation to the overall beach club. Um, but those are the changes. Uh, there's not that many of them. We're happy to go through any of the plans we submitted. It's a thick packet because it, like you said, it is a larger. Uh, if you have landscape questions or architectural site questions, we'd be happy to address them. And we thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Greenhouse. I think it's time for, the, for us to hear from you. Okay, and I, I want to thank the the applicant and, and the team. Um, I kind of put them through the ringer <laughs> on these changes to the plan, um, and they they did everything I asked of them. Uh, we met on the site, and I got to walk it, and and I'm I was really appreciative of the time they took with me, and um, I I think what they've come up with is actually even a better plan than what you all approved back in I think it was January. So without further ado, uh, they are asking for no waivers. Um, the health department septic is regulated through the Department of Environmental Protection for the groundwater discharge permit. Uh, they recommend referral to the DEP to ensure the changes are within the scope of the wastewater system and do not require additional inspections. A new grease trap is also going to be needed and will be uh, permitted through DEP. The proposed restaurant will require a new food service permit through the health department. Review of the floor plans and finishes is required prior to approval of the building permit application. Full compliance with the 2013 federal food code is required. There's also a comment regarding the infinity pools. As Andrew indicated, those are no longer um, allowed. Um, however, the swimming pools uh, will have to meet minimum standards through compliance with 105 CMR uh, 435 minimum standards for swimming pools. The state sanitary code chapter 5 is required, and as we said, the infinity pools are not allowable. Uh, fire, pool, water, and highway had no issues or concerns. Um, conservation review and approval were received by the Conservation Commission, and the town engineer, his comments are noted below with mine. So, um, under my comments, uh, as stated a couple of times now, the and spa have been changed to typical food pools, which are allowable under um, state law. As noted, the town planner and town engineer reviewed the various revised plans and application. Several questions has, arose on August 27th. The town engineer met with the applicant 
and representatives on site to discuss the stormwater discharge permit and the town planner met with the applicant and representatives on site on August 31st to review the set of revised plans. Conservation uh, did approve the portion of this project that falls within its jurisdiction. The Zoning Board of Appeals approved a special permit on January 29, 2020 and amended modified special permit on August 26, 2020. The coastal building plan, the, the building plans for the coastal building are not changed from what was approved pursuant to PB 2019-27. An amended site plan and use special permit are, are recommended as opposed to a new special permit. The request and legal notice were, were shown or in the alternative, I think this can be covered under an amended site plan and an amended use special permit and standard conditions with respect to the site plan special permit are recommended, including but not limited to compliance with the Zoning Board of Appeals, Board of Health, Conservation and Stormwater Discharge Permit conditions and requirements. And that's all I have. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, do we have any comments on the, from the board? Any questions? Dave, I think you need to unmute. Dave Harris, I recommend we close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing. Yes, I second it. Thank you. Go McCallum, second. Mr. Yes. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this is Andrew. Could I just have a point of order? I think you'll need to ask if there's any members of the public before you close the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Excellent point. Any members of the public? I uh, hear now. Is everybody uh, unmuted? You know, would like to speak? A couple of people are muted. All right. Um, I'm not hearing anybody. I have a motion. I have a second. So uh, I say we take to a vote here. Uh, roll call. Duncan Berry votes aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick aye. David Harris. David Harris aye. John McFarland. Aye. Mary Mazowski. Mary Mazowski, yes. Arthur Rouse. Arthur uh, Rouse, aye. Okay, unanimous. Oh, did Bill, you forgot Bill Stoltz. Oh, Bill, Bill sorry. Bill Stoltz. Did I hear you, Bill? I uh, Bill Stoltz, aye. Okay, good. All right. Okay. So. I think we have uh, a couple of options here. Uh, we can adopt the proposed findings. We'll vote on uh, the special permit. Mary, you want to help me out here? Or the the plan review, the, the uh, site plan review special permit and uh, stru the structure building 7,500 square feet, right? Hi, Mary. I propose that we adopt the following findings of fact. One, the property is located within the RH 3 and R L zoning district. The proposed changes of use and alterations to the site were approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, pursuant to the Board of Appeals case number 2019 28 and 2020 33. Two, the Conservation Commission approved the changes within conservation jurisdiction pursuant to Mass DEP SE 32-2383 and SE 32-2387. Three, the height of the proposed beach grill is within the height limitations of the zoning code. Four, Building coverage limitations have not been exceeded. 15% is allowable and 11.5% is proposed. Five, the restaurant building has a net increase of 129 square feet over the previously approved building. Six, no changes to the coastal bar are proposed. Seven, the existing gate house entry building will be reused and relocated. Eight, amenity and site coverages have decreased slightly. Nine, green space coverages have increased slightly. Ten, the use as developed will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Eleven, the site specific site is an appropriate location for such a use structure or condition. Twelve, there will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. 
14 adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. David Harris, second. David Harris, second. Any uh, input, discussion? Greg Nana have suggested a roll call. Duncan Berry, yes. Greg Chadwick. Greg Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Mary Mazowski. Mary Mazowski, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Eric Fultz. Eric Fultz, aye. Thank you. So I assume we're going to go on for the vote on the special permit for structure value in 7,500. Yeah, this is Mary. So I move that we vote to approve to PV 2020-23, which we have had a real estate LLC to amend the special permit for a structure greater than 7,500 square feet. Answer in case PV 2019-27. Make alterations to the previously approved design at the north and south ends of the replacement restaurant building, as well as reducing the size of the gatehouse building, pursuant to the Code of the Town of Harwich, section 325 51, structure greater than 7,500 square feet. In fact, the 400 property located in the RH 3 and R L zoning districts got 23 findings, in fact, and the fact that the application meets all the necessary requirements for the granting of the special permit. Second. Second, Joe. Uh, yes. So, uh, roll call Duncan Berry, aye. Greg Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Mary Mazowski. Mary Mazowski, aye. Arthur Stoltz. Arthur Ross. Arthur Ross, aye. Joe Stoltz. Joe Stoltz, aye. Thanks, Joe. Section number two. Section number three. Uh, number four. Four, excuse me. Number four. So I move that we vote to approve this condition, case number PB2020-23, which will have the real estate LLC to amend pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 325-55, site plan review, and chapter 400, the site plan review special permit. Previously granted under PB2019-27 to make alterations to the previously approved design at the north and south end of the replacement restaurant building, as well as reducing the size of the gatehouse building and accompanying landscape revision to the property located in the R8-3 and R-L zoning districts at 23 Snow Inn Road, Map 8, Parcel P2-12. The decision is based on the aforementioned finding for fact and the fact that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the Code of the Town of Harwich in the following conditions. A. Our Zoning Board of Appeals and Conservation Commission requirements shall be met. B. The restaurant will require a new food service permit through the Health Department and shall include the review of the floor plans and finishes, which shall be required prior to the approval of the building permit application in compliance with the 2013 federal food code is required. C. The new swimming pools fall under the jurisdiction of the health department and shall require a full plan review through both health and building departments, which shall also include full compliance with 105 Code of Massachusetts Regulations 435-00 minimum standards for swimming pools and state sanitary code chapter 5. C. The building plans for the coastal building are subject to the plans approved are subject to the plans approved pursuant to PB 2019-27. B. All signage shall comply with the sign code and building department requirements. F. All lighting shall comply with the lighting code requirements. 
G, all drainage and stormwater requirements, local, state, and federal shall be met and approved by the Harvestown engineer via a stormwater discharge permit prior to the issuance of the building permit uh, to construct. H, this decision shall be recorded at the Barnstable County Registry of Deeds. I, conformance with all review procedures, procedure requirements outlined for sewer protection 400-18G inspection, certificate of completion and asphalt plan of the Code of the Town of Howard shall be met. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Roll call, Duncan Berry, aye. Fred Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McPaul. Joe McPaul, aye. Aaron Nazlowski. Aaron Nazlowski, aye. Arthur Rouse. Uh, for Rouse, aye. Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Very well. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. We appreciate your continued time. Our pleasure. I believe uh, in our public meeting, we have... First of which is minutes from the 25th of August of 2020. I move the minutes of the approval. Second. Who made the motion? Dave Harris. Dave, thank you, Dave. And Joe seconded? Uh, yes. Voting here in the roll call. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. Dave Harris. David Harris, aye. Sean McPowell. Sean McPowell, aye. Mary Mazowski. Mary Mazowski, aye. <laughs> Now you hear Arthur. Uh, Arthur Ross, aye. Thank you, Bill Stoltz. Bill Stoltz, aye. Thank you. Uh, do we have old business or anything else? Uh, just very briefly, if I might, uh, the Cape Cod Commission approved the um, West Harwich Special um, District language. Uh, as being in compliant with the guidelines for the West Harwich DCPC. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you. That was exciting. Mr. Chairman, John McClellan, do we have any uh, updates on um, historical commission developments, Mary? I think it's still, it's still working. Okay. I think you have a question from John McClellan. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, at what point are we going to end up going back and holding our meetings at the town hall? That is an excellent the governor. You need to address that to the governor. Uh, yeah, it's why. Go ahead, Charlie. Entirely in the governor's hands. Right now, we only we can allow ten people in the Griffin room. So. It would basically be the board, a staff member, and applicants would still have to be, um, you know, through remote remote participation. I think we're going to be, quite honestly, with this type of meeting for quite a while. Oh, I, I just made it. I, you know, I, I I I understand, Charlene, but but that doesn't make it any easier, right? It's, it's a difficult way to, to operate. I know we have to do it. So. I think but the health and safety of folks, I guess, should and does take precedent. So, yeah. I, I understand. I understand. I think Joe's actually, I'm kind of used to it. Okay. An excuse to get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I do it all winter. <laughs> All right, anything else? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Uh, we have a second? Second. Do we need to take a vote if we get a second on adjournment? No. Yes, roll call. Okay, roll call, here we go. One more time, this time with feeling. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, yippee. 